When someone asks me for an advice on buying a new TV, a very common question is, is this going to be too big for my room? In 99% of the cases, the answer to this dilemma is that there's no such thing as a too large of a TV, and you'll likely hear the same from anyone that owns a 55 or 65 inch one, especially if they've seen an even bigger screen at their friend's house. Simply a larger image, same as the louder sound, is just more impressive, which is one of the reasons we go to the movie theaters, even if it means listening to everyone around you chewing on their popcorn. Owning a large screen can be quite expensive, so after 55 inches the price goes up exponentially, and even pretty basic 75 inch models can still cost a lot of money. For this reason, a growing number of manufacturers connected to the TV industry also offers projectors, specifically their modern ultra-short throw high-resolution versions that aim to deliver an impressively large image at more reasonable prices. Some of those we've also tested on our channel, but this time we are taking a look at the model by Xiaomi, which was one of the first companies to put this type of a device on the market a few years ago. Their current model is called Xiaomi Mi 4K 150-inch laser projector and represents an evolution of this type of device, which it seems has finally achieved maturity, both in technical and practical sense, to represent a valid option for those looking for a gigantic screen for their home. Now, with a price of around 2000 euro, this won't really be something that everyone can afford, but at a price similar to some of the top-of-the-line 55-inch TVs, you practically get a three times larger screen. This model is also a lot more affordable, up to a few times cheaper than some other models we've seen, so Xiaomi definitely has an interesting option, as they so often do when it comes to mobile phones. So let's see how it actually performs, is it worth the money, and who are the users that should consider getting one. The first thing to notice is how compact this projector is. It's noticeably smaller than the Hisense model we've tested, and only marginally larger than some standard 4K projectors we've seen. It's quite impressive how Xiaomi managed to cram all the electronics, optics, speakers and everything else needed to make it do all the things it can do in such a compact format. On the outside, the projector looks quite simple and elegant with a carbon grayish surface, curved edges and corners and no unnecessary detail. It looks fairly discreet and fits seamlessly into your space and the TV stand you put it on. On both sides of the device there are large mesh-covered vent openings, the entire front surface is also covered in mesh which hides the speakers, and on the back there are three HDMI ports, one USB, 3.5mm analog and digital optical audio outputs, AV input and LAN port, all flush to the surface, which looks really nice. Speaking of connections, there's also a Wi-Fi at 2.4 and 5 GHz, built-in Chromecast which allows you to stream to the projector from different devices, and Bluetooth which is very useful, we'll get to why later. You may notice that unlike the aforementioned Hisense model, this one has no antenna or cable connections, so Mi 4K 150 is not a direct TV replacement, even though its operating system allows you to watch cable and different content providers, but more on that later. I must say I was pleasantly surprised by how easy it was to set this projector up and get it running. It was enough to set our TV stand fairly close to the wall, put the projector on it and move it a bit forward or back to get the desired image size. We mentioned that the device was compact, so there are no rings or sliders for setting the zoom and focus, it's all done electronically and via software. As much as we like the tactile feel of mechanical parts, this is a much more modern approach. Geometry correction is also done in software, and the whole system is well made and quite flexible, with a few different modes, 4 or 8 point correction and fine and coarse adjustments. The only caveat is that the geometry is sensitive to how flat your wall is, so if the surface is not flat and has bumps, you may not be able to correct for that. Of course, Xiaomi does offer an optional projection screen, similar to one we saw from Hisense, which beside being flat also rejects reflections and improves contrast, but the screen is not necessary for a good viewing experience. Honestly, there's something special about how, when you turn the projector on, practically the entire wall behind it comes alive, since Mi 4K 150 is able to deliver an unexpectedly huge image at a very small distance from the wall, thanks to its ultra-short throw projection system. Officially, the projection range is from 40 up to 200 inches, so the maximum image diagonal is a bit over 5 meters, though for the best results, Xiaomi recommends between 80 and 150 inches. For example, what you are able to see in this video is a 112 inch display on the wall of our studio, so you can imagine how much larger the image can actually be. The good thing is that even with gigantic projection sizes, the image still looks sharp and focused, so 4K movies look the way we expect them to. 
This model uses an ALDP 3.0 laser light source, which delivers 1600 lumens of light at the point of projection, with a lifetime of 25,000 operating hours, an equivalent of 8.5 years of use if you watch for 8 hours every day, which is quite a lot. The projection is based on Texas Instruments DLP technology, so you can sometimes notice the rainbow effect typical of DLP projectors, which may be visible on white surfaces when your eye makes a rapid movement. Display quality is surprisingly good, even on a simple white wall, with vivid and saturated colors, so for watching movies in a dark or relatively dark room, the image quality is really good, perhaps even the best we've seen so far on a wall of our studio. As for daylight viewing, Mi 4K 150 gets bright enough to deliver more than usable image in bright scenes, which still look great, but things change when it needs to display something dark, since in that case there's a noticeable loss of shadow detail, which unfortunately is unavoidable when it comes to projectors. This is another reason why this is not a replacement for your TV, but with some window blinds you can watch movies just fine even during the day. Menu's image section allows you to select one of six predefined picture modes, but also two different brightness modes, with view probably being intended for standard viewing and longer laser life, while the highlight option offers a much higher brightness and a more vibrant image. The difference between the two is so huge that we forgot about the view mode right away, since compared to highlight it just looks washed out and uninspiring. Speaking of modes, image adjustment options are quite modest, with only user mode offering any tweaks, and only for some basic stuff like brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, and MPEG noise reduction. Adjustment range is not very wide, so even with contrast and saturation maxed out, sharpness increased a bit, and somewhat lower brightness, the image still looks great, perhaps even a bit better than in factory preset modes. Also, while it's not possible to explicitly activate motion processing, it still seems to be active in some of the modes, so it's most noticeable in vivid modes, somewhat less in standard, while movie mode seems to not use any motion processing at all. Even in vivid mode it's not really that great, so we wish that Xiaomi had allowed for some detailed settings for all the modes. Even though the official spec sheet says that the projector supports HDR, YouTube app gave no indication that HDR was active, and USB HDR files also did not trigger any HDR mode, so we assume that HDR in this case only means that the device supports the format, but is not actually displaying HDR. Besides the image quality, sound was also a pleasant surprise, with an unusually good bass response that even extends into a sub-range, which is why the movies and music sound quite convincing. The rest of the frequency range is not ideally balanced, but is still good enough for a good listening experience, and so is the sound stage. We found no data on the rated power, but the sound hits hard when turned up, even in a very large room, so you won't be needing an external sound solution with this unit. If you really want to, you can expand the sound through an optical or Bluetooth link, plus there's an interesting option called Bluetooth speaker mode, which allows you to use the projector as a Bluetooth speaker for your mobile phone or other device. One complaint we have is that there are absolutely no sound-related settings in the menu, so the only way to tweak the sound is within the options included in a specific app, if it supports any. Here we arrive at one big advantage of this model, the Android operating system in version 9.0, which is still the current one when it comes to Android TV devices. This practically means that Xiaomi Laser Projector is able to run all the apps available for Android TV, and also serve as an Android gaming console if you connect the Bluetooth gamepad to it. You can also stream to it from your PC, mobile phone or network storage, or play PC games through Steam Link, which looks awesome with such a huge display. User interface is standard for an Android TV with lines of apps and content suggestions, and the whole thing runs on AM Logic T962X-H quad-core processor combined with Mali 450MP graphics, 2GB of RAM and 60GB of eMMC storage, with around 10GB of user-available space. Although AM Logic is probably not as well known as Qualcomm or MediaTek, it is a solution specifically designed for Android TV, with somewhat better video and interface performance than what we've seen on Android TV's even higher-end ones. A common problem of skipping frames or stuttering often seen on Android TVs is in this case reduced to a minimum, and it even has a decent enough performance for playing games available in Play Store. The projector is controlled via a simple and compact remote with directional keys and those for voice control, menu, app list, and volume control. The keys are nice, which in combination with a fast interface response makes moving around the UI and even typing text very quick and precise, better than on most smart TVs. The only thing that we didn't like is that there's no key for direct menu access, so in order to select a picture mode you have to leave the app, go to the menu, select the mode, and then run the app again. 
As for the temperature and noise, as expected from any strong light source, the projector does generate a decent amount of heat, which is noticeable on the left side where the hot air is expelled by the cooling system and the warmest point reaches 64 degrees Celsius. The right side where the cold air intake is located is fairly cool, same as the rest of the device. The fans inside the projector get about as loud as a decent gaming PC, with about 60 dB right near the device and about 30 dB 2 meters away, so the noise does not bother the viewer and gets imperceptible when you turn the sound up to a normal conversational level. The overall impression about the Xiaomi Mi 4K 150-inch laser projector is that it is a very usable device and represents a valid alternative for those looking for a huge display for their home. The advantages of this model lie in a simple and easy setup, minimal room requirements, very good image quality in darker rooms, and really good sound as well as in Android platform, which gives you a lot of entertainment options. Sure, the unit is not perfect, so the potential owner should keep in mind that the motion processing is not very good, and the same goes for dark scene display during the day. Still, as strange as it may sound, at around 2000 euro, this is still a good deal, both in terms of price per inch and compared to similar ultra short throw models of this type. The most likely owners of this model will be those who own a cafe and want to get a large screen for sports events, and those who want a movie theater experience at home and have a dark room in order to take full advantage. So, would you like something like this in your home? Let us know in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed this video enough to give us a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to our channel for more interesting tech content. You were watching Bench House, my name is Ivan and I'll see you next time.